SketchIt is a basic professional sketch program included with Appraiser Pro that can also be run independently. In this video, we'll see how it all works. When you start SketchIt by going to the Tools tab in Appraiser Pro, you'll be presented with a blank sketching area. Up top is the toolbar. Mousing over icons will give you a tooltip explaining what they do. You can also use the text menus, and there are hotkey combinations you can use that are listed next to the text menu selections. When you're ready to begin sketching, click the Page Plus icon on the lower toolbar to create a new sketching area. Think of an area as a floor, outbuilding, basement, or garage. Select the category for the area, in this case, living area, as we want to add to the gross living area. Next, for the area name, we're going to select first floor. Finally, we'll set post 2 as 1. Usually this will correspond with the floor that you're drawing. There's also B for basement and G for garage. This will set which line this area will post to in the square footage calculation addendum of the report. Next, select that this area will add to the total square footage or subtract. Choose the font for the labels and select a fill-in pattern for the area. Under the dimensions section, there are selections that determine if and when measurement labels will be added to the sketch for both exterior and interior walls. And finally, under Options, there are checkboxes for Print Calculation Detail and Included in Category Summary to show or not show measurement information on the sketch in the report. For this sketch, we're going to draw the outside walls of the first story of a two-story house. Since everything here is already set up to do this, we'll just need to click Create. Notice the cursor has changed to a crosshair. While you can sketch with the mouse, it's much easier and more accurate to sketch with the keyboard. So we'll place the crosshair in the upper left corner of the page and begin sketching from the back left corner of the house. Press Enter to drop the pen. On the keyboard, we'll type out 50 and then hit the right arrow button to draw a 50 foot back wall to our house. Then hit Enter to lock in the line. We'll continue along the right side of the house, now to the front, and here we have a bay window. For the bay window, we'll come down 5 feet, but we won't hit enter to lock it in just yet. Instead, we'll now go over 5 feet to create a 45 degree angle. Hit enter once again to lock it in. Now 10 across, then we'll reverse the process to complete the window. Once we get to the last corner, we can use the Control c key combo to auto-close the area. Since the area is a bit off-center, we can either press this icon button up top to center in the page, or we can go to the Layer menu and select Move to click and drag it to the top center, leaving us room to draw a second floor below. To draw our second floor, we'll click on the Page Plus icon up top again to bring up the Add Area dialog. This time, under Area Name, we're going to select Second Floor. Note how this automatically changes the Post 2 number to 2. Now we'll click Create. Now, just as before, we'll draw the second floor of the house below the first on the same page. SketchIt allows you to draw precise arcs with just a few keystrokes. We can draw an arc using one of two methods, by entering the chord length, arc height, and the direction, or by entering the arc angle and the direction. Of these two methods, we're going to cover the entering of the chord length and arc height since it's the easiest to measure in the field. To draw our arc, we'll need to know two key measurements. The chord is the straight line between the beginning of the arc and the end. And the arc height is the straight line between the center point of the chord and the peak of the arc. So to draw our curve, we'll first enter the length of the chord, and then the arrow key for the direction in which to draw. Next, we'll press Ctrl-B. The Create Arc dialog box will appear. 
We'll ignore any angle data that may appear in the angle field, but we won't delete the value. Sketchit will calculate a new angle once we enter the chord length and the arc height. Note that the chord length is the same as what we drew in the beginning. Now we'll enter the arc height and then click OK. The angle will be calculated and appear in the angle field and the arc height value will default back to zero. Now we'll just click OK again and SketchIt will draw the arc. Hit enter to lock it in. Since interior walls don't really add to or reduce the square footage of a structure, you don't need to create a new area for them. Instead, they are just associated with the area that you have selected up top. We'll use the pull down to select the first floor. To draw the first floor interior walls, we go to the Create menu and select Lines. We can also use this icon on the toolbar. We now have a drawing crosshair. Just as when drawing exterior walls, there are a few ways you can draw interior walls. You can free draw them by clicking the mouse to drop the pen and move it around, clicking each time you get to a corner, or you can use the arrow keys. The best method, however, is probably once again using the keyboard to type in the measurements you took when inspecting the house. Move your mouse crosshair near a corner of the house and then press J on your keyboard. This will jump the cursor to the exact corner. Now, without dropping your pen, type in the measurement from the corner to where the first wall will begin. In this case, we'll make that 20 feet to the right by typing 20 and then pressing the right arrow. This will move the cursor 20 feet to the right along the back wall of the house. Since the room shares two walls with the outside of the house, we only need to draw the two interior walls. To drop the pen, press the Enter key once, then type in 10, and the down arrow to draw a 10-foot wall down towards the front of the house, and a single Enter locks in the corner point. Next, 20, and then the left arrow key will draw a 20-foot wall, and a double Enter will set the corner point and pick up the pen. We'll need a door to enter the room, so to add one, go to the Create menu and then select Icons. In the resulting pop-up window, go down the list and select Door. By default, the door will be 2.5 feet wide. Let's change it to 3 feet, then click OK. Now we can move the icon over the interior wall, then click to drop it. We can then select additional icons or just click cancel if we're done. Now we're ready to transfer the sketch. Before we do, let's take a moment to make sure everything is aligned by going to the area menu and selecting move. Move each area so it's centered with the other. Don't worry about centering both on the page. We'll do that in a second. Once everything looks good, click the center sketch button on the toolbar to align the entire sketch into the center of the page. When we're ready to transfer the sketch to Appraiser Pro, all we need to do is go to the File menu and select Save Sketch. We don't want to change the default file name because if we do, it will break the link between this sketch and this report if we try to edit the sketch in the future. So just click Save again. Now just close SketchIt. We can view the sketch in Appraise It Pro by clicking on the Sketch page in the Report panel. Information is also transferred into the Square Footage Addendum and into the relevant spots in the main report. If you need to make a change to the sketch at any time in the future, open the report in Appraise It Pro and then open SketchIt from the Tools tab. You can then make any changes needed and save the sketch again to transfer the updates to the report. And that's it. If you need help or have any questions, email us at tech at sfrep.com or give our tech support a call seven days a week at 800-644-4051. Thanks for watching and as always, thanks for being an SFREP customer.